No score in the first. Great cycle down low by the Sharks. That's what they do. Check out Thornton. Waiting, waiting. Sends it down to Ricci. Ricci in the corner. Over to Thornton. On the dot. Go! One nothing Sharks. Scott, Scott, Scott Thornton is, is in the corner. He's so good in the corner. Very strong. Doug Wade is. This is Doug Wade's check in the zone. And as Thornton returns the puck to the corner, watch Doug Wade. He turns back to face the puck. Whoops. Guess where you're supposed to be? Out with Scott Thornton, and he makes a perfect shot to beat Osgood. FYI, Chicken Parm had Chicken Parm for dinner tonight. Later in the first, Sillinger, Danton. Whoop. Nice move there. Michael Danton's first career playoff goal, Bubba. Just look at his tie. You can tell he had chicken farm. Watch right here. Sillinger holds up. What a play. Great assist. Coming off a half trick. Danton's not a goal scorer either, so the Plumbers are really getting the job done for St. Louis. Two to the second. Coral Yuck. Great centering speed. And Nils Ekman. Ekman, great move. Osgood says you'll get nothing and like it, Barry. Well, the one guy they won't be able to blame if St. Louis loses the series is Osgood. He's been great. Every game, he's given St. Louis a chance to win, even though they haven't played that well at times. Still at one in the second. Joe Thornton, no goals yet for the Brewers, but Scott Thornton has won his second goal of the game, Ray, 2-1. Jonathan Chichu has developed into a fine player for the for the Sharks, and here's Doug Waiton and, and Scott Thornton, the, the same two guys as on the first San Jose goal. Doug Wade is not strong on Thornton's stick. Thornton pushes through and slides it into the empty net. To the third. Blues down 3-2. And the Sharks will sit on leads. They've had just four shots on goal in the third. What happened here? Let's take another look. A wide open net is missed, John. That's what happens here. Wade kicks it out. Mellon becomes around the back and is wide open. Gets the post and throws it up in the box off back. And then we have a big pile. Bill McBury says, no goal. Still 3-2 Sharks. San Jose power play. Scott Hannon, not a good angle shot, but Osgood stops that. Koyuk knocks in the rebound. That's why you put pucks at the front of the net. There's always loose change around there. Sharks lead this series three games to one. We go back to San Jose. Will the Sharks wrap it up at home? I think they will. I think this was a game St. Louis had to win. Uh, they, they seem a little disjointed. Uh, bad defensive coverage by St. Louis in their own zone. Those forwards of St. Louis cannot handle the big, fast forwards of San Jose. You mentioned Thornton. Although he left the game, uh, hopefully he can play next game. But Marlowe is tough to handle. His size, Korluk, his size and strength is tough to handle. Chichu, Ray mentioned him. He's very tough to handle. The people like Waite and Demetra just aren't great defensively. And they have to play so many minutes in order to get some offense, Ray. And that really showed up in the second game in two nights for St. Louis. St. St. Louis has the league's second worst record in back-to-back -back games. San Jose the second best. And it really looked as though the Blues were a step slow. So they'll get a game a day off before game five. But they're really in a tough spot. San Jose is a tough building to play in. It is very loud. The Sharks are full of confidence. As Barry mentioned, though, losing Scott Thornton is a big blow to San Jose if he's not able to play in game five. He's so hard to handle around the front of the net. They count on him for a lot of those plays down low around the net. All right, the Sharks cannot be the first team to move on with a win Thursday against the Blues at home in San Jose. Moving on here on the NHL tonight. Well, the, the Flames in the desperation mode. They're down two to one, but the mailman and others deliver. The Volkswagen Spring Sales Drive is going on now. That means it's a really good time to get behind the